Imagine the surprise of waking up to a city beneath the waves. Yes, it's not a fiction scenario, it's the pressing issue of rising sea levels. This isn't a scene from a dystopian movie, but a real-world scenario we're inching closer to each day. Between the start of the 20th century and now, global sea levels have risen between 15 to 25 centimeters. And what's causing this? Well, two main culprits. One is the thermal expansion of water. As the planet heats up, so do our oceans, causing the water to expand. The second is the melting glaciers, particularly in Greenland and Antarctica. These gigantic ice masses are slowly but steadily dripping into our oceans, pushing sea levels higher. This rising tide isn't just a future threat, it's a present danger, impacting coastal populations through flooding, storm surges, and more. So, if the oceans rise by half a meter, which cities and countries will be first to go under? Let's dive into that. You may be surprised to know that some of our most beloved cities are at risk. From the romantic canals of Venice to the vibrant hustle of Miami, these coastal gems and many others are facing an existential threat. The culprit? Rising sea levels. Let's take a look at the Pacific, where the situation is particularly dire. Small island nations like the Maldives are getting the short end of the stick. With an average ground level of just about one and a half meters above sea level, even a half meter rise could spell disaster. Imagine, a nation of over 300,000 people, their culture, their history, all at risk of being wiped off the map. But the threat isn't just confined to small islands, major world cities are also at risk. Ever heard of Guangzhou? This bustling Chinese metropolis is one of the world's busiest port cities but it's also one of the most vulnerable to rising sea levels. A half-meter rise could put the livelihoods of millions in jeopardy. And let's not forget about our friends down under. Sydney, with its iconic opera house and breathtaking harbor, could see significant portions of its coastline disappear. Even here in the United States, cities like Miami, New York, and New Orleans are on the front lines. They're grappling with the harsh reality of more frequent flooding and the potential for much worse. These are not just cities and countries, these are homes, these are lives. And they're under threat. The statistics and data are clear. The sea is rising and it's rising fast. And it's not just about the loss of land, it's about the displacement of people, the loss of biodiversity, and the ripple effects on our global economy. The urgency of the situation cannot be overstated. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But what exactly is causing this rise? Let's sail to the poles. Picture the vast icy landscapes of the Arctic and Antarctic. Now imagine them melting. The Arctic and Antarctic, our planet's icy giants, play a crucial role in regulating global temperatures. These frosty regions are home to massive glaciers and ice sheets, colossal vaults of frozen water that have been accumulating for millions of years. But these icy behemoths are under threat, and their demise could spell disaster for us all. You see, these glaciers are like gigantic mirrors, reflecting sunlight back into space and helping to cool the Earth. But as they melt, less sunlight gets reflected and more gets absorbed, causing the planet to heat up further. It's a vicious cycle, a runaway train of melting and warming that's difficult, if not impossible, to stop once it gets going. But the melting glaciers aren't just causing temperatures to rise. They're also contributing to rising sea levels. When glaciers melt, the water has to go somewhere, and that somewhere is the ocean. Between the 1990s and 2018, melting glaciers in Greenland and Antarctica contributed significantly to global sea level rise. And as our planet continues to heat up, this process is only going to accelerate. These frozen titans hold enough water to raise global sea levels by several meters. If all of the ice in Greenland were to melt, sea levels would rise by about seven meters. If all of the ice in Antarctica were to melt, sea levels could rise by a staggering 58 meters. While it's unlikely that all this ice will melt in the near future, even a fraction of that amount could have devastating effects on coastal cities and low-lying countries around the world we are witnessing the slow demise of our planet's icy giants. The Arctic and Antarctic are melting, contributing to rising temperatures and sea levels. The consequences are already visible in the form of more intense weather events, coastal flooding, and the displacement of people living in low-lying areas. 
So, with these icy giants melting away, what can we expect in the future? Fast forward to 2100, our world map looks a bit different, doesn't it? Imagine a world where the sea level has risen by half a meter, one meter, or even two meters. This isn't some dystopian fiction, but a future that could become our reality if we, we continue to ignore the signs of climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCCC, our leading authority on matters of global warming, tells us that the sea levels could rise anywhere from 30 centimeters to 2 meters by the end of this century, all depending on our greenhouse gas emissions. That's a hefty range, isn't it? But let's break it down a bit. At the lower end of the scale, a 30 centimeter rise might not seem like much, but even this seemingly small increase would put millions of people at risk of annual flooding. Now, imagine the impact of a two meter rise. This would mean devastating consequences for our coastal cities and the people who call them home. The key takeaway here is that our actions today will directly impact what this future looks like. The more greenhouse gases we pump into the atmosphere, the higher the sea levels will rise. But this isn't just about numbers and projections. It's about people, communities and entire ecosystems that are at risk. It's about the millions of people who could lose their homes, their livelihoods, and their way of life. So let's take a moment to really think about this. If we continue on our current path, our children and grandchildren could live in a world where cities like Miami, Shanghai, and even parts of New York are underwater. That's a future we have the power to change, but it's not all doom and gloom. There are ways we can fight back. We're not just victims here. We can rise up against the rising tide. We have the power to adapt and innovate. Strategies such as managed retreat, where we move away from vulnerable areas, coastal accommodation, adjusting our lifestyles to live with the water, and protection measures like building seawalls and dikes are all ways we can manage the rising sea levels. But these are just band-aids on a gaping wound. The real change comes from each and every one of us. It's about switching off that light when you leave the room, cycling to work instead of driving, or even planting a tree in your backyard. Small actions when multiplied by billions of people can make a monumental difference. It's also about raising our voices, demanding that our leaders take bold action against climate change. It's about voting with our wallets, supporting companies that prioritize sustainability and boycotting those that don't. In the face of climate change, we're not just passive bystanders, we are the warriors on the front lines, armed with the power to turn the tide. Remember, every action counts. Let's not wait until our cities are underwater to make a change.